Guys, it's John and I'm here. We're opening of SHOT Show and we ran right down here to talk with Brett uh, from Seismic because these rounds I think are really interesting. It's not often that you see a kind of a, a really interesting advancement in defensive ammunition. Um, and you guys know, if you've been around the channel a little while, I like heavy for caliber bullets. I feel like heavy for caliber does good. And you've taken that and like went way over the top with it. Uh, talk to me, Brett, about why you decided to make this round. So we, we started off with 9mm because 9mm is what we viewed as one of the most common worldwide calibers, 100%. including the United States. And uh, even though 45 always has a sweet spot, especially in American culture, uh, gun shooting culture, uh, which we have a bullet that will be coming out later for this, 9mm is great because it's also higher mag capacity mm -hmm. and it's easier follow-up shots. There's no way around it. 45s recoil worse than 9 mils. Sure. And so if we were able to design a bullet that was able to get started getting into the lightweight 45 territory, i.e. 185 grain 9, yeah. which is the lightweight 45 weight, then we felt like we really have something. So it's really been a three-year three development project where we've been working with um, various different manufacturers to get um, the projectile just the way we want it. And then it finally came out like this. So this is a swage lead core copper plated projectile that has a lubricious coating on the surface, the, the, the black coating. And so what this is, is this looks like a normal hollow point. Everybody's hollow point should look like this. Sure, jacketed expansion. hollow point should absolutely look like that when it comes there's, out there's of There's nothing jail. special about having an expansion out of a hollow point. This, this has been a solved problem for a long time. The problem with hollow points is once you plug them up with a little bit of something mm -hmm. or once they open, they've completely stopped. Any sort of takedown power that you're gonna get out of it is gone. Okay. Where with this, you'll notice versus having just a fully expanded where the base would typically be cut off right there, we've got a full weight slug behind that that continues to push it straight through. Yeah. So it allows you to have a significant amount more penetration, but because of the hollow point, it basically prevents it from over penetrating. What we've been seeing in a lot of our gel tests is we basically get through a 16 inch block and if you put a three by five card at the end of the 16 inch block, it slightly tears the three by five card. So it, it, it bumps it and stops. Yeah. So you get full penetration with full expansion without stopping and without having to worry about, even if this got plugged up a little bit and didn't fully open, you've got a lot of weight behind this to where it's still, push, it's still pushing in. Yeah, and 185 grain, nine millimeter. Now most of, I, I, the heaviest that we see on the market right now is 150 grain. Yep. And so going over that significantly, and, and that would be great, except for you're getting expansion that looks like the best defensive rounds on the market already. With the additional weight behind it, is very, very interesting. Um, I'm gonna guess, now, now we haven't tested, I haven't tested yet, I know you guys have. Now, I, I just want you to know, Brett has a PhD in material science, okay? So this is not something that you're just like, hey, let's make a heavy bullet, let's put it together and throw it out there. Right, so we spent a lot of time, as you can tell, well, there, and there's a reason why nobody's come up with a 185 grain nine. It's because you can see where's one of the where's one of the bare bullets here. So you put this up against the case, against the overall length of what the cartridge can be, and you can see there's not much room for the powder to live in. Yeah. And so, and uh, you shot the ammo yesterday, correct? I did. We spent a lot of work tuning that recoil impulse, so that way people felt like they're shooting 115 grain 115 grain nine. I couldn't tell the difference between 185 grain that you were shooting and at, at NATO pressure specs. Yep. And 115 grain range ammo. So, so with the, and not to try to get too technical, but with all bullets, you have a pressure versus time curve, right? And yeah. that really informs what your body's going to feel as far as a recoil impulse is concerned. Yeah. How your body feels recoil is really complicated, and there's a lot of debate on how that is. But regardless, the sharper and the snappier that spike is, typically the worse off, the worse off you are. It's so not rock, that's not rocket. That's science. not rocket science at all. <laughs> and so by being able to level out that curve a little bit, so you have more area under the curve, so you're getting the same actually more energy out of it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're actually feeling yeah, your recoil is is negligible. So we've been able. It's been a lot of time tuning that, and then well. The, also, the real, the, the real challenge was making sure this got up to 950 feet per second so we get real reliable expansion out of these hollow points okay. without violating pressure specs. Because that's when you do start playing the pressure spec yes. game. It's actually, it doesn't feel that bad even when you do overpressure around because these cases can handle it. But, and, and you put it through a reliable handgun like a USP or a Glock, you're not going to blow it up, right? Okay. But at the same time, you are violating pressure specs at that point. So you want to have something that's safe, that's certifiable, mm -hmm. that still gets the velocity and the expansion. And so between that and the tuning the recoil impulse, that, as you can tell, that's where a lot of iteration time was spent yeah. is because there's a lot of effort spent behind getting basically a powder, a powder charge that's that much to do this at the end of the day yeah. and while falling under every spec that we could 
Well, at 950 imagine. feet per second, subsonic, so that would seem to be awesome in your pistol caliber carbine. Yep. Uh, awesome when you run it through a can. Yep. Because that'll get whispery quiet. Um, that sounds really, really interesting. Now, of course, we're going to have to look at ballistics and trajectories at distance and those kind of things, but um, so tell me about this case. What, Brett, uh, this is an interesting thing that we haven't seen. So, so this is a shell shock case. Okay. So, um, and the reason why we want a shell shock is uh, we really just feel like it's a great case. So first of all, this is, so it's aluminum base, and we have these custom anodized to really just stand this out. Like red is hot, this is, a, this is a NATO pressure, just so you know, like you're picking up a special round. And then uh, obviously with the color code in general. But then this is a nickel alloyed stainless steel, this deep drawn. And so this from a strength standpoint is just worlds away from brass, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And so having that plus having the, the fact of the sort of power powder charge we need to get to get up to velocity, we felt like just we wanted this to be a tank round as far as being solid, reliable, you can't really break it or do anything bad to your gun. And so we've run this all the way through, you know, your high-end guns like an H and K USB, which is not notoriously built like a tank, I would say right. on the higher end. Sure. And then on the lower end, we run this successfully through a high point. And we have had zero wear or zero problems with, with zero it. problems with the right. high point. The high point are known to be on the bottom end of the market. So, and we run it with everything in between to make sure that we're meeting chamber specs because we do obviously have a very long bullet here, and to make sure even though we're under the NATO and SAMI length with the ogive geometries, you can run into all sorts of issues with actual spec barrels as far right. as are you running into the lands, are you running into this, are you running into that. This seats and everything we put it in Great. from a carbine to a pistol. That that's a big deal. I mean, again, when you're if you use up all of your case head, uh, use up all of the mouth, you got problems if, if it won't feed reliably. So if it does, that's awesome. And you also see here, there's a, a coming a little later, 325 grain, 40 by God five, yep. right? So th th that's super interesting, because to me, a 300 plus grain bullet, we're talking 44 Magnum areas. That's, exact, that's exactly it. So we were we were trying to mimic actually with the, the ammunition line, like your heavier, like cowboy action style revolver rounds. So you have 185 grain and 200 grain 357 mags that you'll find, sure. which are, you know, just a hair's breadth difference from a nine millimeter bullet as far as uh, diameter is yeah. concerned. Right. I mean, cartridges are very different, obviously, but, and then you've got like 45 long colt. So I'm a, a 45 long colt, 44 mag. Those are, and the nice thing with 45 Long Colt is all these cowboy action rounds do exist. It's just nobody's tried to shove them in a 45. Right. AC, ACP. ACP. And so, uh, but we felt like with the powder that we've developed and the loads that we've developed, that this gives us a fair shot at really doing this across the full ammunition line. Mm. And, and the real philosophy behind the round is, why, instead of doing, don't get me wrong, I wildcat it, wildcat's fun. The problem is, I like to be able to walk into a store and be able to buy ammunition wherever I'm at. Yeah, whether it be a Walmart or whatever sort of sporting goods supply store I'm at. And you're not going to find random XX by XX caliber at every sporting goods store you ever mm -hmm. find. The thing is, with doing, I feel like with just engineering loads behind well-known cartridges, you can sort of open the spectrum of capability of cartridges with your common 9 mil, 45, 12 gauge, and we will be doing 5.56 and 7.62 by 51 as well. So now that you actually have a much wider envelope as far as capability is concerned with off-the-shelf cartridges and guns that are extremely common mm, platforms right. versus having to do these specialty wildcatting things that yeah. it's just like, hey, this is really fun, but I just spent a buck around and it really hurts every time I pull the trigger, like uh, when I'm training with it, where this stuff is, well, this is high-end defensive ammunition. You can also just throw a 115 grain 9 and train in and with it. And train with it, and you're going to get the same feel out of that gun. The same recoil impulse from a 115 grain 9 mil target, is not, it's not going to be like, oh, well, this feels totally different when I shoot this. feels the same. Training right. experience will be the exact same. That's a really important thing because the way that the gun runs in your hand when you're training if that is significantly different, and a lot of times it is, especially people shooting plus P's and stuff like that and their defensive loads, that's a big deal. So I think this, this is very intriguing to me, guys. I, I, I think, of course, uh, I, I'm always color me skeptical, and I know you'll appreciate that, yeah, because yeah. you always gotta go, okay, wait a minute, but how does it really perform? And, what's, and everybody's got a boutique round, and everybody wants to say it's the greatest thing since beer in a can, but the physics seems to be behind a heavy for caliber round that expands reliably and still has significant mass behind it, I'm having a feeling that what we're going to find is, is when we start shooting this through intermediate barriers like glass, it's going to probably deform less because it's slower. Slower round at a heavier velocity is going to push through the glass more than it's going to be deflected by it. Um, not that it won't deflect at all, but it'll deflect less. That's an issue through probably um, the, the uh, car doors, probably less deflection and less um, uh, 
fragmentation as well. So yep. it'll be an interesting thing to see. Just, just so you see as well, this is a one ounce standard 12 gauge slug and that's the two and a half ounce slug that they're offering. That's what it looks like when you shot it on a piece of steel. So that looks ugly. You hit somebody with two and a half ounces of lead at a thousand feet per second. Uh, I don't even care if you hit them on the plate. That's probably a bad day. It's it's still going to be a bad day. If you're standing behind the plate, you will not be enjoying yeah, the process. That's, yeah, it's pretty miserable, I'm going to guess. So yep. this is this is interesting, guys. We're going to try to get some of this so that we can run some of it. And I know that I have a couple other friends. Um, I know my, my friend Tamara Keel has, you know, she's going, I got to I got to really run a whole bunch of this. So we're going to let her be her expert self and do a bunch of that. But uh, man, this is interesting, and I'm really glad you brought it to the show, Brett. And I and I really think stuff like this pushes the industry forward. So thanks thank for you. explaining, man. Yeah, uh, no, thank you for stopping by, and thanks for the interest. I really appreciate it. So uh, these are is the nine mil release. So no, this right is now? the hard, this, uh, shot show is our hard release of nine mil. We have okay. two hundred eighty five thousand rounds that are going into commercial production right now. Okay. So we'll be releasing some for T and E for people like yourself, as well as be available for initial distribution and sales, okay. uh, et cetera. We're working with some pl uh, police departments as well as just getting them out to the actual just sporting groups in general as via dis distribution groups. And are, so you're going to go uh, hopefully soon be able to find these in their local retailer? Hopefully soon. Yep. Uh, th this is our first round that's being released, but uh, trust me, we are we have no reason to slow down the process. Right. <laughs> More bullets everybody does. Yeah, so, exactly. Wow, Thanks, man. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you.